Welcome to Mastering Solutions. For this mass and weight problem, we have an elevator and a skyscraper, and they say that it takes four seconds to reach the cruising speed of 10 meters per second. We have a 60 kilogram passenger on the ground floor, and we need to figure out the apparent weight for these three situations before it starts moving, while it's speeding up, and when the elevator reaches its cruising speed. Let's draw a free body diagram. So when the elevator is going up, we know that the acceleration is going upwards. And so the person obviously is going to have their weight coming down and then the normal force will also be moving up. So for part A, before the elevator starts moving, the apparent weight is there just the weight, that's it. So it's mass times gravity. So we have 60 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we have 60 times 9.8 gives us 588. So we could round that to 590. So 590 newtons is the apparent weight for the person before the elevator starts moving. And that again is just their normal weight. Now when the elevator starts accelerating, it's going to be different because now the elevator is going to be pushing up on the person. The person will be pushing down on the scale. So we could say, we'll just put a parent weight there because they're going to appear heavier as the elevator is going up. And so their normal force would also be higher because of the added weight of the elevator moving up. So if you think about it, we're going to take this thing right here, their normal weight, and add whatever this is. Now there's two ways that you can do this. I'm gonna show you both. The second way is gonna really, really, really help you out on your test, so pay attention to that part. For this first way of doing it though, we can say that the elevator is accelerating and we can figure that out. Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. The change in velocity is zero to 10 meters per second. So we have 10 meters per second for our delta V and four seconds for our delta T. And 10 divided by four is going to be two and a half. So we have 2.5 meters per second squared for the acceleration in the elevator. And so we're trying to find what the force is because that force is the apparent weight. The mass isn't changing, so it's the acceleration here that is changing. So what you could do is you could say, we have the 60 kilograms is the same as we said, and now the acceleration is going to be the normal 9.8 meters per second squared, but we're also adding this extra acceleration, which we said was 2.5 meters per second squared from the elevator. So we have 60 times 9, 9.8 plus 2.5. So we have 738 or 740 newtons is the apparent weight as the elevator is going up. So that's the one way you can do it. The other way is a really, really good formula and you should memorize this for your test. The apparent weight questions are just such easy pickings for your professor because it's confusing for a lot of students. And so you wanna get really good at these. So the formula that you'll need is the apparent weight, W app, is equal to the normal weight multiplied by one plus acceleration divided by gravity. Now I looked all, all over through the chapter, I didn't see this in the book. So if I missed it and you saw it in there, let me know in the comments what page it was on because this is a really useful formula, but I didn't see it anywhere. We could also rearrange this for acceleration. So the acceleration, if we were given all of the weights and the apparent weight and we wanted to find what the acceleration was, which that kind of question showed up on my test. So we'd have the W app or apparent weight divided by the actual weight, and then we'll subtract that from one and we'll multiply that by G. It's the exact same formula, we just rearranged it for acceleration. These are really cool because especially this one right here, the apparent weight and the actual weight, the units don't matter. You could have pounds or you could have kilograms or whatever because the units will cancel. So we're just finding the ratio of the apparent weight to the normal weight. And when you subtract one from that, that will find the difference. And then we'll multiply that by gravity, which will give us the acceleration. 
So I would definitely star these two formulas and memorize them because they're extremely helpful for a test. And now for the last one for part C, after the elevator reaches its cruising speed, that means acceleration now is zero. And so acceleration is zero, so it's not speeding up or slowing down. So the apparent weight will again just be mg because the, the elevator's not pushing up or slowing down on the person at all. And so their weight is the only thing that they're feeling, which will again be the 590 newtons.